I, I think your idea of vacation is probably working on your game in the summer. So uh, I won't ask you if you went to any exotic places. I know we were just talking before we went on the air about last thing you want to do sometimes is get on an airplane mm. when you're not during the season. For sure. Uh, does that part of it is like you have to just deal with the travel stuff? I used to say they pay me to travel the games I work for free. <laughs> yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. This will come with it. <laughs> it's yeah. what comes with it for real. So if I, if I don't have to do it during the off season, I try not to. I know you say you don't like long flights, but you were born in Japan. Mm -hmm. I think that's a trivia question that mm -hmm. people don't know, yeah, right? They wouldn't know that. <laughs> you wouldn't know that. But were you? Uh, was it the kind of thing I knew? Your mom was in the military, correct? Yeah. Is that was that the situation why you were born in Japan? Yeah. Um, I was like one though, so okay. I don't really have no remembrance of it no memories of it but they tell me about all the stories in japan it sounds cool but i would actually love to go back I, I have dual citizenship there so i would definitely try to like go back one of these years and just you know really experience it one time maybe so we'll see so one year old and you you were you, you so you never went back no i, I think um but your mom so tell me about your mom because you know mom in the military mm -hmm. uh just you and her growing yeah, up. yeah 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 tell me uh, about that and your mom yeah it's been good um we have a good relationship. Well, a great relationship. Uh, we're real close. Um, she's always sacrificed for me and always catered to what I wanted to do. Like what I'm doing now, she always try to put me in the best positions to get where I am now. So you know, I can't thank her enough for that. And then it's just always, um, just always tough love. You know, you get. I love it, but at the same time, it's like ah, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's been good. She always, uh, she always pushed me to be the best. Um, she always sees me as being one of the best and she always pushes me everyone since i was younger trying to push me to be the best and not settle not settle and always be like disciplined she always really instilled that in me discipline so i just try to do all that where i am now and was she critical like would she be hard on you in terms of your playing the game because i mean i know you know, my son on a different level when he used to be playing yeah, like yeah. Little League. Yeah. It was funny because I was the one who was always kind of encouraging and my wife would be the one. Why did you take yeah. the bat off your shoulder? Why didn't you swing at that pitch? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. was she both for you or did yeah. one, was it one or the other? Yeah, she was both, but really more critical because she saw what I could be and how good I was, I guess. So I guess she always wanted me to do it better, do something better. Don't be, don't settle, don't be average. So I would put her in more critical category, but she she would tell me if I played really good or had a really good game, she would tell me like, you know, you played great that game or something, but she definitely never, you know, patted me on the back as much. <laughs> so she does very, I put her in the critical category. Um, and then that, you know, she's growing up in like the Chesapeake area, Virginia, right? Yep. Um, and I know you play, you're at Oak Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, you play with some great AAU programs, right? Was it Boo Williams? Boo Williams, yeah. Um, it, that and then you go to LSU. Yeah. I mean, your whole life has been consumed by high level yes. basketball. Yeah. Uh, sometimes that can go the other way. For sure. So, what kept you? Was it was it mom or was it something else? Was it boo? Was it what? Yeah. What kept you on the path that you were on? Uh, really, my mom and just uh, like I tell I tell all the young kids, just always try to like find somebody who you want to strive to be or strive to be better than. And for me, that was Kobe. So even now, um, even now, I just try to be better than him or just strive to be as close to what he was. I mean, I just always try to use that and just try to use that to drive me when I was younger. But really just me just trying to be like Kobe Bryant. So I feel like that's really like drove me to be my best when I played at high level of basketball, as you say. So I was just, just trying to strive to be like Kobe in that aspect. Is that the 24? Oh, of course. It's funny because it's amazing because I was talking to uh, Jackie Quee mm -hmm. and he's wearing eight yeah. because of Kobe. And yeah. here's a guy who grew up in China. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was actually attracted to that Mamba mentality. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. it's amazing because guys can see things he could do physically and winning championships and everything. But the guys in your generation see that mental toughness that yeah, he had, yeah, yeah. right? Is that something you lean on? Yeah, definitely something I lean on. Um, I didn't really start knowing about his Mamba mentality until he started retiring. Well, well, when he retired and started talking about it, about how he views stuff. Like, But when I was younger, it was just his play. Like, I really enjoy watching him play and just everything about it. Like, 
I honestly feel like he was the perfect basketball player to look at for me. So I, that's sure. why I try to imitate as much as I can that he did. And, you know, the rest is history, really. I just really enjoy watching him, you know, strive to be the best. And now I'm trying to use that for myself and my career now. But the mom mentality is definitely something you can look at, too, as well. Like, because he, he used that even outside of sports, as he said. Like, he used that in his writing books or just – him winning the Emmy, producing movies, producing yeah. movies, like won just him going to Oscar for, yeah. uh, for like I guess a little book or something like. Yeah. So I guess he he can use my mentality for anything, but I really gravitated towards the basketball when I was younger because that's what I knew I wanted to be a basketball player. But it's well, been good. You've needed some mental toughness and perseverance in just your short time <laughs> here. For sure. uh, I mean, uh, you've had to go through teammates being drastically different from playing sure. with the stars when you first got here to sure. now being with young players. Uh, you've had to deal with coaching changes. You've had to deal with uh, your minutes being adjusted. Mm. Uh, so I'd say how you get through that, but I mean, that's part of it too, right? You've yeah. had to be very mentally tough in yes. just a couple of years here. Definitely. Um, definitely had to be mentally tough my first few years here, um, especially coming from always playing when I was younger starting playing mm. being the guy always starting doing that stuff until you you know you get to the leagues a little different you're in and out of rotation you're looking like hey i can actually play out here but you know your number is not getting called so you're just sitting there and sometimes you start to doubt yourself but at the same time it's good to have people in your corner who keep you uplifted and just knowing like and then for me personally it was just me knowing myself and knowing the work i put in all these years and even when I got to Lee, just putting the work in and knowing, like, my opportunity is going to come. So when that when that comes, I just have to be ready at, at all costs. So. But you, you had opportunities and performed and yes. then would go back to not playing. Exactly. Um, and that's got to be hard to deal with. Definitely. And I, you know, what, what was told to you over the years as to, all right, what it's going to take for me to now become a regular rotation guy? And how do you... How did you take those messages? Yeah, I wasn't really told much. I feel like it was just timing, just waiting my turn, timing, mm -hmm. situations. Um, I, was, I wasn't really been told much about what to do out there to get on the court more because whenever they told me to do something, I would do it. But sometimes it just don't work out in your favor. Just how it goes when you're a young player in the league. So um, I feel like for me it was just working out getting my shots up, getting my reps in, just always staying ready for opportunity, like you said. And just, you know, when I got opportunity, I just try to make the most out of it because, you know, at that time I didn't know when I was going to play again after the opportunity. Yeah. So I just try to make the most out of it the best I can. So, But where where do you think there's room for growth in your game besides just, you know, becoming a better, you know, improving your skills? Yes. Where do you where do you see the, the room for growth for you? Yeah. Um, as I said, probably throughout the summer, just turn into more of the leader aspect for the team because mm -hmm. I, I think I'm the second longest tenured guy here. Amazing, about, right? Yeah, me and Dayron, <laughs> like player-wise, me and Dayron were the second longest tenured. So I feel like just want to develop into more of the that leadership role because, you know, being here the second longest and just, just want to develop that more and just keep growing in that. Obviously, on the court-wise, it's just you want to keep improving everything. Nobody, as I said before, nobody's the perfect player. So I just want to keep working on everything, shooting, scoring. Um, playmaking, defending, and all that different stuff. So I just want to keep better, get better, keep getting better in that aspect. How are you going to deal with all the attention? I mean, you started to see it last year. I'm talking about mm -hmm. from the opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden, last year, you were getting double teams. They were yes. trying to get the ball out of your hands. Right. So so what's that adjustment like for you? Oh, it's been good. Um, just knowing how the defense guarded me last year and want to build on that because I, you know, I don't know how they'll do it this year. Obviously, it'd probably be some – something similar but we never know uh, so just looking at that and being pre more prepared for that to start the year off just preparing to be double team blitz to get the ball in my hands so we'll see how that goes um and that's it really just being more prepared and knowing what could happen so i have a better understanding of that so it should really help me this year how about what about being a lead guard as opposed to being an off the ball kind of guy is there something you favor do you think you can be that lead guard like where do you see maybe that position where that could be a tough matchup. If you're bringing the ball up and you're working pick and roll with Claxton or something like that, is that something you see this year with this team? Yeah, I feel like this year I'm going to be able to do both, mm -hmm. um, lead guard and off. Um, I feel like that's the beauty of me, of who I am as a player. I'm able to do both. I don't really need to have the ball 
And honestly, and at the same time, he can put the ball in my hands and have me make decisions. So I feel like that really makes me a tough cover in a way. So like defense don't just have to look on the scout and be like, oh, he's just gonna ISO the whole game. Oh, he just, oh, he can't really shoot off the catch really. So I feel like that really makes me a tough cover because I can shoot off the catch. You play off, I'm gonna just shoot it. And you know, you want me to play one on one. I feel like I'm one of the best one on one players in the league. Um, so I feel like that's also good to my strength as well. So your numbers were good on catch and shoot. Yeah, I've seen shots, I've seen right? I've seen a lot of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I, even I, know. I have one I want to ask you. I always see because I try to describe it in my play by play, but that you're so adept at you're going across the lane mm. and you, you twist your body mm -hmm. and you kind of shoot like, like as if I think somebody may describe it like if you were riding a horse and you turned to shoot an arrow, mm -hmm. like that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> how did you develop that? Uh, I developed that when I was younger, real young. Um, I think I think it was my mom who told me as long as your shoulders are square to the hoop, you know, it should, you can, you can be able to make it because your shoulders are square. You're square. It doesn't matter about you know the bottom. So I've really tried to use that like different, like, like just had to try to have that in my game as like a different shot because you know when people see you going across the lane, they don't expect you to uh, like go up quick and shoot. Yeah. So I really tried to uh develop that because. Going across the lane of that, most people are expecting you to pass. So I just really try to use that to my advantage and just try to go up quick and just try to square my shoulders and get the ball to go in. So. It helps when you have that substantial lower body strength. Exactly, yeah, too. for sure. Is that, is that natural or do you work on the lower body? Uh, I honestly worked on that. Um, I was trying to dunk when I was younger. <laughs> oh, really? I was trying to learn to dunk, so I really worked on my lower body, worked on my legs and stuff. But you I definitely you worked could, on that when I was younger. You couldn't grow. Yeah, right. and You couldn't to control how fast you grew, but exactly. you can control how strong your you legs got. how strong got. you are, for sure. So that really helped. I love that we started the theme about your mom and her influence, and then we talk about her influence on that shot, too, mm -hmm. squaring mm -hmm. your shoulders. For sure. Uh, great stuff, Cam. Thank really appreciate your time no, here. No, man, I appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, certainly, I, you know, I don't – just, I mean, one last thing with the expectation level of the team – we don't really know what to think, and yeah. there's a lot of thoughts of you know how many games are they going to win. But is that can that motivate you guys a little bit when you see that you know Vegas has it 19 and a half games over under? Oh yeah, it's definitely motivation for me. Um, I can't really I can't really speak for anybody else how they feel, but everybody feels different. Um, but for me, I always use everything as motivation when someone doubts me or my team. So I'm definitely going to go try to go out there and prove you know whoever it is wrong in that aspect. So. You know, every game I'm gonna go out there and give it my all. As you guys know, I'm gonna go out there and play as hard yeah. as I can every game. And if it leads to wins, it does. League pass alerts for Cam Thomas. You want to, the reason to tune in mm -hmm. to the Nets this year, Cam? Sure. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate man. that.